As the world celebrates Father's Day, we know the true Father. Amen? The Father of all creation. The Father that loves His children. The Father that never forsakes. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Would you turn to 1 John chapter 4? Starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ his coming to the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay, you can all go home now. I mean, that's the conclusion of everything, you know? Think about this. You know, one of the things, uh, 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 the, the scripture is so enlightening in the area of the reality. Everyone say reality. That means things that are real. Making things real. Did you ever tell someone, you know, you know get real? You know, there's a reason for that. What, it, what, it, we're actually, what we say, get real, means, man, I hope you see what's the truth, what's reality to you. Now, we live in a, multiple realities. There's universal realities. There's multidimensional realities. There's all kinds of realities out there that we are associated with and live in. But there is a reality which is true and eternal of Christ Jesus. Now, when you begin to think about the world that we live in and how we were raised in a reality, it's the reality of the world. Amen? It was, we were, that was made real to me and you. How many of y'all had a dream you could have sworn you were there? I mean, you'd have bet your life on it if you didn't wake up. Because it's real. Even when you sleep, it's a different reality. Sometimes God's speaking to us in a message or so forth. There's something going on or something that you've gone through. Even pizza will cause a different reality. Amen. So things that we eat, we could cause a different reality. Things that we drink. Look at when people do drugs and alcohol. Man, they're in another reality. Amen. So things that we input can put us into another reality. And the purpose that God Almighty became manifested is because the true reality had been stolen. And God came to pay the price to get back true reality, the reality of who we are. See, this scripture says it all. They do not hear you because they're not of a different reality. You and I were once of this reality, but we are born out of it. Everyone say, I'm born out of this reality into the eternal reality. So there are people who are still bound in the false reality. True reality can only come from the creator of reality. You know, reality, what is real, it's what is real, what is fake, you know. He, we called it, he said, it was either from error, right, or truth. So anything associated with error is false reality. How a person perceives things will alter their future perception. Of all things, I'm going to say that again. How a person perceives things will alter their future perception of all things. If you've accepted something that is untrue as a reality and you've made it real to yourself, everything will be attached to that and everything of your future, of your perception of things. 
Amen? Again, a person perceives things will, how a person perceives things will alter their future perception of all things, depending on their reality foundation. See, there's an imaginary foundation. There's a hopeful foundation, but there is a tangible foundation in the true reality that's eternal. So our foundation is essential. It's essential. If the foundation we're built on is not a true reality of Christ, our perceptions in the future will be different. That's why the Lord warns us, don't be unevenly yoked. Be careful where you go, what you touch. Why? Because the enemy is out to destroy your reality or steal. He can't really destroy it. He steals it. Is everybody okay? Now, we know that the world is a temporary reality controlled and altered by the Antichrist spirits, all media, music, technology, invoking strong desires and imaginations to prevent the movement or acceptance of the true reality that awaits all creation. It's awaiting. God is trying to bring reality to everyone. What's the reality? The kingdom of God. That is the only True reality is the kingdom of God. That's it. Everything else is a lie. Temporary. Not eternal. Anything that's not eternal is temporary. Amen? That means it's not a true reality. You and I were born in a deceptive reality. We lived in it. We grew in it. We became prosperous. And we became failures. It all depends. But their reality stands in its own compared to another reality. You and I were born in a temporary reality, born again into an eternal reality. And the enemy is always trying to prevent your growth in that reality. See, God is expanding reality right now. That's why you see everything going on in the world. It's called an awakening. Awakening brings what? Reality. Of what's what? Good, bad, evil, whatever. So many times you and I have to go through stuff because we didn't get it yet. So God has to bring us through trials and tribulations so the reality of his principles and integrity and way of life is imparted in me and you. Amen? Is everybody okay? We said this. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrews chapter something. I didn't write it down. <laughs> I think it's 10. <laughs> chapter 12. <laughs> 10 was not on this line of reality today. <laughs> Hebrew 10. I mean 12. Sheesh kebaba. Is everybody at 12 or 10? Can we try 13? All right, 12, 25. Let's speak it together. See that you do not refuse Jesus who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much, more, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavens, the unseen realm. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. So let me share with you this. Truth remains. It can't be shaken. It can't be shaken. Truth is reality. The reality is truth, and real truth is reality. He says... 
Verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, a true reality, which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. The kingdom of God is a true reality that is expanding by the shaking of things attached to the false reality, attached to this world. Keeping individuals in a state of false perception, the great weapon of evil. Amen? Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. Deception. Deception is a false reality. People do a lot of dreaming. I, when I was out there using drugs, and I dreamt about a lot of stuff. I imagined all kinds of stuff, but didn't have two nickels to rub together because every time I got a bunch of money, I'd blow it. Ephesians chapter 5, false realities. Expanding reality. That's what Jesus is doing right now. If he's expanding his kingdom, is he expanding reality? Yes. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Oh, happy days. Everybody there? For you were once darkness, but now you are what? Light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Rather, the, rather what? Expose it. Why? Because those are influencing and trying to remove or compromise our true reality. The enemy will try to get you to compromise your, yeah, listen, your identity is vitally important. Your identity of who you are in Christ depends on the reality level you're at. Amen? So, the enemy's trying to come to steal, kill, and destroy. What's he always trying to steal? Your right reality. I mean, your identity. Because if he can compromise your identity, he's going to compromise your reality. Then you become more dependent on the false reality instead of the true reality. And that's where people begin to lean on. They begin to lean on the false reality instead of the true reality. That's why the word says, seeking the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. Seeking the kingdom of God. What does it mean? Seeking his kingdom and his righteousness. Amen. What? You're seeking the true reality of all created things of God Almighty. You want to walk on that foundation. What is real? What is real? What is real? What is fake? What is error? What is a lie? What is truth? There's only one truth. There's only one reality. It is real. Everything else is temporary, delusional, deceptive, and a lie. That's why everybody's, that's why the world's going through what it's going through right now. Amen? Oh, glory. Let's go a little further. Verse 12. And it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. Is the light truth? Yes. Is it the true reality? Yes. For whoever, whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine. Now, those people are drunk with false reality. In which dissipation, but be filled with the what? Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart towards the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things of God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And submitting to one another in the fear of God. In other words, respecting one another in that area. Awake out of the deceptive reality 
which is ruled under the false gods and goddesses of these lies in this generation. That is the fallen race of the Nephilim race. They live to destroy. They live to create their own reality and dismantle the reality of Christ and his kingdom. They are full of hatred. They carry no love. What they're trying to do, so for me and you, we are to stay away from these deceptive delicacies. Amen? Like drugs or unclean things that will alter or pervert the expanding true reality of Christ's kingdom. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. I mean, I've everybody's also heard someone say, man, what reality are you in? You know? Because they're so deceived. So you got to understand, even the pharmaceutical companies are promoting a false reality. Think about that. They are, Hollywood promotes, what it's called, I mean, Hollywood is nothing but fake. Amen? It's all indoctrination. It's all programming. What it's, it's promoting the world, isn't it? All of these things promote the world. They promote a false reality. Not promoting the kingdom of God. Heck, even the schools have taken Jesus out, right? Prayer has been taken out. But you can pray to Satan. They can do witchcraft, sorcery. They can bring Ouija boards in. They can do every. See, they are trying to move God's reality out and put their own re created reality in. in. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. You know, when you come to the truth and you realize how deceived we were, how misled we were, how much time we wasted in a false reality. In verse 1, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith. In other words, their connection to what? True reality. They will depart from it. They will have faith in a false reality. Faith is still faith. Amen? People have faith in themselves. In all, all the tangible things. They have faith in their bosses. They have faith in all. But all of these things are all temporary. So there's a false reality of faith. And many will fall from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Drawing individuals that had faith in the time, in the true reality, in the faith of, and turned it to the faith of self centeredness, not able to deny self. And maintaining a life in the false reality. You and I were born out of this reality into a true reality. That's why you must be born again. In Luke chapter 17. There's still pain in this reality. There's still sorrow in this reality. There's still oppression. Why? Because it's ruled by darkness. You're going to have suffering in this reality. Amen? You're going to go through stuff no matter what. Because this reality hasn't been dissolved yet, but it's, on, it's in the process of it. But first, all of those that have been taken captive in this reality, Daddy wants to rescue. Because this reality is dissolving, and anyone caught in it will dissolve with it. Luke 17, 20. Let's speak it. Now, when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God is not 
will, does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is what? Within you. It's where? Within you. The kingdom of God is the true reality not yet seen by humanity yet. Amen? Now, people have been taken in the spirit and seen dreams and visions. The Bible is the recorded true reality. It is a book of reality. It is true. But the kingdom of God is within by conversion of the soul and in the knowledge of Christ. By the conversion of soul and the knowledge of Christ. And again, in a new spirit we get and a new birth into the true reality. So we see that there's a parallel reality, isn't there? You and I were born into this reality of deception. And we're born into the reality of truth which is eternal. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The first he tries to take is our identity in the new reality or to compromise your identity in the new reality. If he can compromise who you are, your reality begins to diminish of truth. We must learn to adopt to the new realities which is brought to me and you by revelation. Revelation, revealing. Amen? What's it revealing? The new reality. The true reality. So that's why it's so important that you and, you and I get revelations. What's it revealing? It's revealing the true reality of Christ. The kingdom of God. What's that doing? It's expanding the reality. See, you are, God is expanding your reality of his kingdom, of who he is. Every day. Every moment. Even while you sleep. It doesn't stop. His purpose is to expand his kingdom by expanding reality. Hallelujah. Every day, a reality of Christ's truth is revealed to the expanding true reality of Christ's kingdom. The creation, the creator of reality is bringing the truth to his creation so they can escape the bondage of deception. Think about that. That's why Jesus came. Memories are stored in the universal reality. And we got a, like the cloud. Hello? They are stored in segments of time to be shared by all involved in the same event. Think about that. If you come up to someone that, and you say, hey man, do you remember... Yeah, we did this, 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 and this. That was a stored reality. Does everybody get this? It's a stored memory and a universal reality that everyone shares from that event. Now, if a person, especially from our past, if a person begins to draw off of that, it will begin to diminish and dissolve the true reality that was given to them. That's why many people backslide. That's why people aren't consistent. See, consistency has to do with faithfulness. That's why people are not consistent. Why? Because they're in mixed realities. They're not true to the one. They compromise. Them. They're more of men pleasers than God pleasers. They're more of self-centeredness. Because that's what the reality of the world wants to always do is keep you self-centered. Me, myself, and I. To remove that all things are possible from God. To remove that all things are going to work to the good. To remove that he who's in you is greater than he who's in the world. To remove that I can do all things through, uh, through the anointing of Christ. That I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing, seated in heavenly places in a joint heir of Christ. That's a whole different reality. The world can't understand what you're saying when you speak like that. Say, what? And never mind, you can't understand my language. I'm not speaking your reality. I'm speaking eternal, not temporary. Amen? Oh, praise God. Matthew 11. So think about, you've got novels, you've got fiction books. What is a fiction book? It's a false reality, isn't it? It's called fiction. Amen? 
You got all kinds of things out there that bring people into an imaginary place of delusion, but it isn't true. And then let me tell you, when people grab these areas and hope that they can become some of these false reality promises, they begin to compromise the true reality. There are so many people that are chasing a false hope, which is a false reality. So many. It's incredible. Matthew 11, verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed with soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft gar clothing are in the king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. For this is he who, whom is written. Behold, I send my what? Messenger. What is the messenger? He's a messenger of what? Reality. Before your face, who will prepare the way of the creator of reality. That's why John came. He was preparing the way of the one who created reality. Think about this. The creator of reality. But the enemy wants to come to steal, kill, and destroy Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to receive it, in other words, if you can comprehend this, John is Elijah, who is to come. He who hears, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him what? Hear. The witness of true reality was John the Baptist to prepare the way of the creator of reality. The battle, the battle is between taking territories in other words, things are taken by force. So there's, in other words, it's not only physical, but it's spiritual. That's why it's called, we call down, pulling down principalities, powers of darkness, wickedness, and heavenly. But there are also <laughs> political offices, lands, businesses. It's our responsibility to drive out deception. It's our responsibility to drive out that false reality. Because if you're not driving it out, it's taking you over. You're either expanding the reality or you're diminishing the reality. Does everybody understand that? So we're to drive out the false reality and reveal true reality to expand the reality of Christ's kingdom. For we don't look at the temporary, but at the what? Eternal reality through the knowledge and the leading of the Holy Spirit who guides us to all truth. And 1 Corinthians 3. Let me share with you this. You cannot bring false reality into true reality. Will never work. They tried to plead with God. They even bargained with God. Oh, Lord, just let me have this and I'll do that. That's trying to bring something of false reality 
carnal self sovereign reality into eternal reality will never work, and he'll never do it. And when he doesn't answer, people try to do it themselves. And that's all it does is bring dissolvement of true reality. Remember, if you're not expanding reality, you're diminishing. 1 Corinthians 3.19. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or world of life or death and things present and things to come. All are yours, and you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Let's go back to verse uh, 9 for a minute. For we are what? God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he what? Builds on it. In other words, Paul saying, listen, I'm a builder of true reality called the kingdom of God. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ, the true reality. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with what? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Are those true realities or temporary? Temporary. In other words, you're not going to build on it. You're not going to, I'm not going to lay a, a foundation of true reality, and you're going to take that and try and build it with temporary reality. In other words, money's not going to build the kingdom. Does everybody understand that? Truth builds the kingdom. True, but it takes money to declare the truth, to spread it out. Do you understand? Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. Why? Because what he's put on there is on the foundation of reality, the true building blocks of reality. But if, any, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as through the fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness. Amen? Praise God. So the foundation of true reality, and the Lord is saying, stay away from deceptive building blocks of false reality, but maintain the understanding that we are temples of the true reality. We are carriers of the true reality. Remember, this is the creator bringing reality to his creation. That, you know, what did he, remember what Jesus said to those, to his disciples, he said, You have been given the mysteries of God, and they haven't. When Jesus was here, what was he talking? You've been given the reality. You've been given the reality. You and I have been given the reality. True reality. Knowing this place is temporary. <laughs> true reality of who we are with a, a true identity in Christ. Born of the Spirit. Fed by the Word, guided by the Spirit, on the foundation of Christ Jesus and His kingdom that is expanding every moment. Every moment. And Daniel chapter 7. What's God doing right now? He's expanding reality. Why? Because he's expanding his kingdom. You know, people may know about the kingdom but not get the reality. There's a difference. In Daniel 7. Oh, 
Oh, hallelujah. Anybody there? <laughs> Verse 21. Everybody okay? In verse 21, I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them, until the Ancient of Days came, and a judgment was made in the favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be defeated from the other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who arise from this kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. We see that happening now. Then a saint shall be given into, the hand, into his hands. It seems to be happening also. Does everybody understand it? In other words, we haven't seen the breakthrough yet, but it's coming. For a time and times and a half time. Now, again, we know that this is future event, but things that are in the Word are three-dimensional. Things that have happened in the past that are happening now and happening in the future. Verse 26, he said, but the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion. What court? The eternal court. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions shall serve him and obey him. This is reality. This is the kingdom of God. The devil will attempt to change times and laws to mislead individuals from the path of real, true reality. But only for a short time. The Bible is the book of reality by revelation to mankind. That's why it's so important for you and me. The more revelation you get, the more reality expands. And James 3. Fear is definitely a dissolver of true reality. Again, you got deception and fear. James 3, verse 13. Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. So this wisdom from the world is demonic. In other words, it wants to dissolve the wisdom and the reality of true reality. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The world's wisdom that is exalted by carnality. The world's wisdom is exalted by carnality. People with great wisdom of the world are all exalted. The world's wisdom that is exalted by carnality is a deceptive tool to block true reality. To do what? Block true reality. 
Oh, they may have the wisdom of the world, but do they not have the wisdom of God? Remember, the wisdom of God tells you what to do in the Spirit. Amen? It is the wisdom that is eternal. It is the wisdom of the true reality. It is a tool for me and you. The gifts of the Spirit are tools for me and you. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. That's why the Lord always warns you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. Why? Because you'll compromise the one reality, the true reality, always. You know, people try to do all kinds of stuff. You know, um, following the integrity of Christ is essential. Amen? In other words, we want to follow the we want to, he, he places things in divine order, not in disorder. In divine order. Why? So it maintains a true reality. When things fall out of divine order, it begins to dissolve true reality or compromise it. Amen? Listen, this is, if this is your home, home fellowship, home gathering, this is where you tithe, right? But you can offer anywhere else you want. But when you begin to steal from God's house, it brings a curse. And people don't realize that. Well, I'm giving to the kingdom. No, God set you in a house to build. Is everybody okay on that? You understand that? Because some, the body of Christ is scattered all over. They got like a, what they call a free spirit. I'll just go here. I'll go there. I'll tithe here. I'll give here. I'll do that. No, wrong. Wrong. Totally out of order. And it diminishes the true reality. And the person, remember, when there's a diminishing of the true reality, what does it do? It affects your future perception. And you'll pass that on. People will pass it on to someone else, and that person will fall in that same category. Heck, I was one of them. I was in that category. I mean, I used to go to a church, and they'd throw something in there, you know, whatever they felt like. Here's a buck. Here's 25 cents, you know. But then they wanted the church to help them. But they were never true tithers. Tithing brings blessing. You steal from God from his house. I'm talking about his home house. You will receive a curse. And the reality will begin to diminish the true reality. And in anything else. It's important that we understand these characteristics and the integrity of Christ and how divine order is done. Because without divine order, there's no holy order. Amen? It's no time to play games. It's no time to be about self. People still living out of emotion, giving out of emotion. I feel this. What did God tell you? I don't know. Well, find out. Verse 13, let's speak it. In him you what? You also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the what? Guarantee of our inheritance until redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and what? Revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. In other words, not only in this reality, but the other one that is coming, the eternal. 
For he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Eyes of understanding to the reality of Christ's kingdom, his principles and integrity. Again, that's why he says, seek ye the kingdom of God. What are we doing? We're seeking reality, aren't we? In his righteousness. As children, as wise children. The word says, don't be fools. Be wise. Amen? Why? Listen, those fools, the virgins, the ten virgins, the, all, all of them were born into true reality. But five of them chose not to maintain the true reality. They began to mix. And then the true reality became diminished where they didn't stay filled. They're relying on self now. It's about me. It's about making money. It's about doing this. It's about doing that. I got this. I got this. It's all the eye syndrome again. It's not the kingdom syndrome. It's the eye syndrome. And that is a false reality. And what did Jesus say to them? I don't know you. But they started off right. But midway through it, they compromised their identity and their reality of truth and began to take in more of the false reality. In Romans 13, verse 8, I'm telling you, we are at a time right now that is phenomenal to me. Phenomenal. But I know God is getting ready to explode. There's a lot of things going to be happening, and we want to be prepared and not taken out or having the true reality dissolving on us. kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking, but what? Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Romans 13, 8, please. Let's speak it together. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments you shall not make commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not cover, and if there is any other commandment, are all summoned up in this saying, namely, you will love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, and therefore love is ful the fulfillment of the law. And do this knowing that the time, that now is high time to what? Awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in the revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh because it will begin to dissolve the true reality to fulfill its loss. Again, you and I are hard-pressed all the time to try and compromise that reality. When we begin to compromise, it doesn't expand. If we're not expanding it, if it's not expanding to me and you, then it's diminishing. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter 6, or 1 Timothy 6. Hallelujah. Glory. Let's speak it together. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And have, having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which, draw, which drawn, drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O oh man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. 
lay hold on eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is blessed and only potent and the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has the immortality, dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power in Jesus' name. Fight the good fight of faith, your connection to the true reality of life eternal. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal this covenant word with us. Keep it protected so that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory and penetrate every part of our being and members and bring to remembrance that the kingdom of God is the true and only reality. Everything else is a lie and temporary. So, Lord, we call on the name above all names, Jesus, to keep us connected and positioned for your glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.